Hi, I'm Emily from Homemade Emily Jane. Today, let's talk about how to make four at a time flying geese. This no waste tutorial might seem tricky at first, but it's actually super easy once you get the hang of it and is definitely a preferred method when making flying geese. First off, let's talk about what is a flying geese quilt block. Flying geese have been around for years and years and are one of the foundational quilting units to make in a traditional quilt block. It's a rectangular block made up of one large triangle and two small triangles that come together to make a block that is twice as wide as it is high. This example here is two inches by four inches once it's finished. So right now it's two and a half by four and a half because of the seam allowance. Other examples of flying geese sizes could be one inch by two inch, one and a half inches by three inches, three inches by six inches, and so on and so forth. Before I actually show you the method of what you need to cut and sew together to make the four at a time flying geese, let's start off by going over calculations so that you can figure out what size your starting squares need to be in order to make your desired finished flying geese quilt block. Now, the flying geese quilt block tutorial uses one large square and four smaller squares. The large square ends up being this big um, triangle in the middle that on this example is blue and the four small squares end up being the sky here, the little smaller triangles. There are actually quite a few different calculations for how to calculate your starting squares for your flying geese, but I'm gonna share with you the one that I prefer the most. So in order to calculate your starting fabric squares, go ahead and take your finished height plus one inch, and that will be the size of your four outside triangles and then calculate your finished width and add an inch and a half. And that'll be the size of your one square that ends up in the middle. You can use this neat chart, go ahead and save it for later, and it'll give you the sizes for some commonly used flying geese quilt blocks and what size your starting squares need to be. All right, now that we've gone over the calculations, I'll go ahead and show you an example of me making four flying geese out of five starting squares. Now I've already pre-cut my five starting squares, my one large one and my four small ones. The next step is to create a mark diagonally across each of the small squares. So I'm going to do that by using a ruler and a heat erasable pen. You could also use lots of other marking devices such as pressing a crease with an iron or a water soluble pen or whatever your preferred method is. The pen that I'm using will erase when I get it hot with my iron and it's one of my favorite ways to mark lines when I'm using it for piecing a quilt. Once all four squares are marked, go ahead and take two of your smaller squares and line them up diagonally so that the line that you drew goes straight across the diagonal of your larger square. Next, we'll go ahead and pin these into place. I just like to place one pin across each one to keep them from sliding around. And we'll go over to the sewing machine and stitch a quarter inch on each side of the line. So we'll end up with two seams and then the line in the middle. Once your first two seams are sewn on both sides of the line, go ahead and cut on the line that you drew, which separates your first two pieces. Now we'll go ahead and press either like this, or you can go ahead and press the seam open like this with your nice hot iron. I chose to press my seams to the side towards the small triangles. And the next step that we'll do is take for each of your units, you'll go ahead and take another one of your small squares that you drew the line on and line it up with the edges. And then we'll go ahead and pin it into place. But before I pin it, I want you to see how when we end up sewing a seam here, it's gonna fold open and you're gonna have a flying geese right there 
and then this seam is going to fold open and you'll have another flying geese. So we'll go ahead and pin these in place and stitch on each side of the line just like we did at first. Now that we've sewn a quarter inch on each side of those lines, we'll go ahead and cut again on that center line that we had previously drawn. And now as you can see, we have our four units all separated and I'll go ahead and press out again. This is another option where you can press the seam open if you choose. You would just separate the two seams like that and press with a nice hot iron. Now we have four flying geese, all nicely pressed, but as you can see, they still need some trimming. One thing I love about the formula that I used in my calculations for the starting squares is that there's plenty of excess on these, so we'll go ahead and trim off quite a bit. Um, there's two different methods I'm gonna show you how to trim. The first one I'll use is a flying geese block lock ruler, specifically made for flying geese. And this one is really neat because the ruler has these um, grooves in them that go ahead and just grab the seams when they're pressed to the side like I did on here. So I go ahead and just place the ruler on top of the unit and it grabs it at the seams and as you can see it doesn't budge. So now we'll go ahead and grab our rotary cutter and just trim around the top and the side and then I'll rotate the unit and trim again. So easy and we have a perfect flying geese unit. Now I want to show you how to trim your flying geese using a quilting ruler that you probably already have. I'm using here a six and a half inch square. You can use any size square ruler as long as it is larger than your flying geese. So in this example we'll go ahead and flip our flying geese kind of upside down and line up our diagonal seam on the diagonal of the ruler and also make sure that we have a good quarter inch tip right at the point because that's going to stay for seam allowance. And then we also want to try to even it out. So we know we're going to trim to the four and a half mark. So let's go ahead and center it as much as possible so that we have an even side cutting on both sides. And you'll see that the tip of the two and a quarter inch mark comes right to the tip of your geese, that little seam there. So now we'll hold the ruler in place and trim along the side and also the top. Next, we will go ahead and rotate the geese and trim the other two sides. So here we line up the four and a half inch and the two and a half inch marks. And then also make sure that we're not losing the tip right here. We wanna keep our seam allowance. So now we will hold our ruler in place and go ahead and trim the side and the top of the geese. So now we'll have a perfectly trimmed flying geese trimmed with just a normal quilting ruler. I've also seen lots of other really neat flying geese rulers online and I'll go ahead and put links to those in the descriptions if you want to try out a different trimming method too. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make four flying geese all at one time. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and also check out homemadeemilyjane.com for lots more quilting tips and tricks.